Hey guys, needless to say, I did a little bit of testing on keto graham crackers, but I figured it out and I'm gonna make some delicious keto marshmallow cream to dip them in. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. And here we make delicious pastries, many from my time as a pastry chef. And my goal is to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoy these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button down there, hitting the thumbs up, leaving me a comment. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today, a super versatile recipe you can just make them into graham crackers, but you can also use them as a keto cheesecake crust recipe. So I already have all my ingredients measured out. I weighed them all because it takes way less time to weigh than to measure with measuring utensils. We just got to sift everything together. So I got my coconut flour, which is my preferred flour to use. It's less grainy and gritty than an almond flour. And then of course some cinnamon because we have to have cinnamon in our graham crackers and a little bit of xanthan gum, and then some oat fiber to give a little oaty flavor and a little bit more texture to it. And then what makes it crispy is the egg white protein powder. The egg white protein is pretty vital to making a crispy graham cracker. And then I tried different sweeteners. I wanted a golden, more caramely flavored graham cracker because most graham crackers have honey in them, which we can't use. So this replaces that a little bit. I also tried with allulose, but the allulose doesn't get crispy. It stays soft, which is why we use it for our caramel and to keep our ice cream soft. So they tasted super good and caramely because allulose caramelizes when you cook it, but it's soft so it didn't make a crispy graham cracker. So we're using the golden monk fruit sweetener. Sift all that together just to make sure there's no lumps and just give this all a whisk together because you want to make sure that xanthan gum is really incorporated into your dry ingredients. You don't want a pocket of xanthan gum or cinnamon. And then the only other ingredients are butter and some vanilla extract. So we got to melt our butter. Now this recipe is super easy to throw together, but there are some tips and tricks here to get the perfect crispy keto graham cracker. We're gonna mix our vanilla extract with our butter. Once that's together, you just pour it in the middle of your mixture. Make sure you get all your butter out. That was five tablespoons. You wanna start by mixing in the center to get your vanilla kind of incorporated. And gradually go out and incorporate more of the dry ingredients. Now a trick here is you really need to work this. If you have any dry ingredient bits that are just all full of butter, you're gonna have ones that aren't full of butter. So you really gotta make sure it's combined really well. Like see this piece right here is more full of butter than the crumbs that are in your bowl. So you wanna make sure all those big lumps are kind of mixed up and incorporated in here. Get the butter evenly distributed through all these dry ingredients. Okay, so once that's fully incorporated, I just kinda of use the rolling pin as a guide to how thick I want it. I want it a little bit less thick than a quarter inch. So that's what we're going for. Put it all in the middle of your pan. And I looked up the dimensions for graham crackers. So you want this kind of similar in size to 10 inches by eight inches. That'll give you six sheets of graham crackers. So once you got it on your sheet, you kind of roughly put it into your rectangle shape you want. You see any big lumps in there? Kind of try and break them up a little bit. Really the hardest part about this recipe is getting an even thickness all the way through your graham crackers because the middle almost always ends up being thicker than your edges. So we're gonna try our best to get it all even. I think we need it a little bit longer still. You don't really wanna pat this down yet. So you wanna get it kind of even first. And then you're gonna squish it down to make it nice and packed so you get nice thin graham crackers. So give a little measure. Yep, we're at 10 by eight. So I've done this just a few times, so that's why it was that easy. Now is when I take my rolling pin, and just kind of give it a little, problem is, is that then it makes it too wide in some areas. So you gotta kind of 
shuffle it down a little bit. Want this a nice rectangle. You want it thin in the middle. So quarter inch, so that's where it is now, but you want it a little bit thinner than that. So push it down and out to the sides. And then you can start working the edges. You see your corners are a little thin? Push some up in there and squish it down. This will be really easy to put in the bottom of a nine inch spring form pan and make a graham cracker crust. This is just an adapted recipe from my tagalongs. The same thing happened in my tagalongs. When you push them down and try to shape them, they try to crack at the edges. Gotta kind of push them together. It's almost like building a sand castle here. It wants to fall apart. <laughs> But I tried adding more liquid. If you add more liquid to this in any form, you end up getting not crispy cookie. See, that's good enough. Pretty packed down everywhere. Oh, and I forgot to preheat my oven. Preheat your oven to 350 before you start messing with it. It takes about the time it takes for your oven to preheat for you to get this into a rectangle. Now we need to add one more thing to this to make it into graham crackers. We gotta add our lines to make them into sheets. And this ended up being, I think, a little bit bigger, so you're going to have actual bigger sheets than a graham cracker. Graham cracker is five inches by two and a half inches. You don't want to move your knife, you just want to press it in and let it up. If you get any cracks, just make sure you fix them a little bit. Now, if you're using this as s'mores, you don't want to put in the extra perforation because they'll end up breaking on you. But if you're just dipping it, you want the sticks. So then you divide it into three. There goes my rolling pin. You just want to press down a little bit. You don't have to go all the way through. It just makes the perforations and you can crack them on there. I'm going to use this for a dip today, so I am going to make my perforated lines all the way down. There you go. Now each one of these sheets of graham crackers is two grams of net carbs. 12 for the entire thing. And our dip is zero carbs. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven. They take about 10 minutes. You want them nice and golden brown all around. I'll be back to show you what they look like when they come out of the oven and we'll get on to making our marshmallow cream dip. Okay, so I put them in for 11 minutes. I'll put nine to 11 in the recipe, but you want it nice and golden brown all around the edges and to start getting brown in the middle too. So I'm gonna set these aside and we're gonna get on to making our marshmallow cream. I did turn those halfway through and also you cannot touch those until they're completely cooled because it takes time for the egg white protein to set the cookies. Right now they're pretty soft still, but once they cool, you can break them apart and dip them. So we're getting on to the marshmallow cream, which is basically just a Swiss meringue. I went through a lot of testing with this also. I really just wanted a keto fluff, but most of the recipes called for honey or corn syrup. So I just went and looked in my pastry book and I looked for a marshmallow recipe and we actually don't have one in my classic French pastry book, but we do have meringues. And I kind of looked up a recipe online too for just like a marshmallow cream. And what came up was a Swiss meringue. So I looked in my book and I figured out a recipe. So first off, room temperature eggs. We gotta separate them. You want to make sure you get no egg yolks in your egg whites. So I go back and forth, save your egg yolks for keto creme brulee or for an ice cream recipe. You can just use egg yolks instead of whole eggs. I have both on my channel and I'll link them up there for you. See when the shell breaks like that, is when I go and use my hands because it's hard to go back and forth when it's a tiny shell. And you want your bowl that you're using to be super clean and dry. No water in there. Now this is super simple. It's going to be a little bit harder to do because I'm on a higher counter with a butane burner, with a pot, with my bowl. But on your regular home stove, this will be much easier. I have a pot with just a tiny bit of water because I'm using my mixing bowl as my heating bowl. You don't have to do that. You can use just a regular metal bowl or a double boiler and then transfer it into your mixer. I just don't like to dirty a lot of dishes. So I'm living a little dangerous here 
because I have to use my smallest pot so that the water doesn't touch the bottom of my bowl. But if you use a regular metal bowl, you can use any size pot you want and it'll be more stable. But I got my two egg whites in there. Now we need the secret ingredient, which is allulose. And I found this bag at Walmart. How cool is that, that Walmart is now carrying allulose? If you just wanna try it out for yourself or try out one of my recipes, you can maybe find it at your local Walmart. And it's pretty cool. It's only allulose and natural flavors, which I don't prefer, but it's much better than using regular sugar for this recipe. The first time I did this, I only did one egg white, which is perfectly fine. It worked good. I'm gonna do a double, cause I'm gonna make a little keto marshmallow dip to take to our Labor Day festivities today. So I already all went through this. I just bought it and I'm already out, which is why I buy the big bag of allulose on Amazon. The link will be below. It's the cheapest I found and you get the most for your money. This bag is pretty much done. Need just a little bit more. Now I have my laser thermometer here on standby. You want this at 160, but you can also just test between your fingers and if there's no graininess to sugar in your egg whites, you should be good to go. I'm gonna turn this on as low as humanly possible. Again, this thing is a little crazy. Start stirring or whisking the egg white and the allulose together. And last time this only took couple minutes. I only did one egg white though and a quarter cup of allulose. But you can literally double this or triple this to make a lot of frosting. Basically a Swiss meringue you can use on several different kinds of cakes, cupcakes, or just as a dip for graham crackers. Super delicious. One of my favorite cakes I made in pastry school. I don't remember the name of it. I'm gonna look it up in my book and I'll insert a picture, but it was just a yellow cake or sponge cake, but you can use my keto vanilla cake and put a keto raspberry jam and then cover it with this Swiss meringue. It'd be super delicious. So when you know you're getting there, it's gonna get a lot thinner and all your sugar is gonna be dissolved. Ooh. That's another thing that's not good about this burner. This pot just fits on there. This is pretty thin. We actually might be at the right temperature. So pull it off. Oh, we're at 113. So we're very close. It goes from like not there to there in like no time once you get above 100. Basically you just want to whisk continuously just so your egg whites don't cook. On your regular stove top, this should take no more than four minutes. The first time I did this, it was the perfect serving for me and like one other person. The thing with the allulose is it dissolves pretty well. So I'd say we're there. If you're testing with your fingers, be careful because it is a little hot. I have fingers of steel from work. <laughs> Done with the whisk. My spatula back. Okay. We're going to get all this stuff out of the way because I got to get my mixer up here. So that was the hardest part of the recipe. Now you just let it whip at high speed for about five minutes until it's nice and stiff peaks. And I forgot to add the vanilla. I knew that was gonna happen because I didn't measure it out ahead of time. <laughs> now here's where a good quality vanilla comes in handy. I have a little bit from work, bourbon vanilla extract because literally it's just egg whites and allulose and the flavoring. So you want it really good vanilla extract. And give it a little scrape down. It looks like marshmallow. Looks so good already. It is delicious. And it's so fluffy. It looks like marshmallow fluff. So now to decide on what we're gonna make, now, there are so many options here. I tried making um, like a fluff fruit dip where the ingredients were fluff and cream cheese and it just doesn't taste like marshmallow anymore. And I really want a nice marshmallow flavor to go with our graham crackers. For me, I went and got a new toy, a butane torch to toast up some of this marshmallow cream on top of some chocolate that I'm gonna melt in the microwave. So also found at Walmart, I found some hazelnut milk chocolate lilies and milk chocolate isn't as hard as a dark chocolate. So I'm hoping this isn't gonna get too hard when I take it to our little get together. So I'm gonna use the milk chocolate instead of the dark chocolate. But I found dark chocolate sea salt at Walmart also that I did make a dip out of and it was really delicious. And I'm doing an eight by eight dish just because there's a bunch of us. So I might need more than one bar of chocolate too. I'm just gonna blast this in the microwave 
just until the chocolate is melted. And I'm gonna top it with our cream. So whatever you choose to use as your dip is what your carb count's gonna be. I said there's two egg whites and allulose in there. So no carbs and it's good just on its own. I actually probably prefer it that way. So good. So I'm gonna do 50% power at 30 second intervals until this is just melty. Okay, so that took about two and a half minutes on 50% power just to get melty in there. We got our graham crackers. They are cool. They already broke a little bit. Break it into sheets. Break it into dippable sticks. So one of these is two grams of net carbs. If you got it the right thickness, it should break nicely. Problem is when they're a little bit too thick, they tend not to bake all the way through and that's why you're not gonna get like a nice break. They're too thick. Nice little graham crackers. That one I didn't perforate enough so it didn't break on the line. We got 24 graham crackers. Now it's time to finish our dip. So I got my Delicious Swiss meringue. Looks so good. Put it right down on top of these guys. I love allulose. So nice to be able to make all my favorite stuff. Oh, I tried it by accident with erythritol first. Oh man, was that a crystallized mess. I'm gonna take my mini offset spatula and do this like meringue topping out a pie. God, it's been a while since I've done that. And this will last out on your counter for an entire day. Put it in the fridge and it got kind of liquidy. The recipe I looked up for the marshmallow cream said to put it in the fridge, but this recipe really reminds me of my grandmother's boiled frosting recipe. And I asked my mom, I'm like, should I put this in the refrigerator? She's like, you know, I don't remember grandmother ever putting anything in the refrigerator. There's always a cake or sweet out on the counter. I make the little peaks, wood like a meringue pie. I get all it on there. Now oh, I can make, I could try making a baked Alaska. <gasps> so many possibilities. Now it's time for the fun part. My new toy. This thing's kind of crazy. Do it kind of far away before you realize how close it'll be. You know, it smells like marshmallows in here. That was fun. <laughs> Now it's time to try this and it looks amazing. These are like nice and crispy. You hear it? So they're crispy like a graham cracker. Dip it in there. That looks so good. <laughs> it's like having marshmallows. Mm. Oh my God. That one's <laughs> so good. May I say, it's even better than a s'more because it's less messy. You just dip it and it's already toasted for you. Mm. Mm. Graham cracker is mealy like a graham cracker is. Like it has like that texture. Sweet, brown sugary and cinnamony is so good. And this marshmallow dip is amazing even just by itself with no chocolate. It's so good. So I hope you guys make this recipe for yourself. Keto graham crackers and marshmallow. I will be doing a marshmallow recipe. I just have not had the time to figure out marshmallows yet because you have to let it set, it takes hours. I will figure it out though at some point, but this is a delicious replacement. Amazing for parties. Like imagine bringing this out, just do this part right before you're ready to serve it it took me two minutes in the microwave and about 30 seconds to toast it up and it was amazing. So don't forget to check out my Amazon links. This will be down there. I'm so happy I finally have one. You can make creme brulee and toast your marshmallows up. Those are down in the description box below along with the link to the entire recipe. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. 
Bye, guys.